Let's talk about the longsword again, to be precise about the guards of the longsword. But before we start, by the way, here you can see the castle of Schwerin. Actually this is not the no longer look as it did in Maya's times, but some parts are still from the 16th century. It was Maya's last residence. Here he was a fencing master for the Duke of Mecklenburg. But only 40 days after arriving in Schwerin on the 24th February in 1571, he died of unknown causes. Okay, but now back to our topic. In late medieval sources, usually only four guards are pointed out and described explicitly, but there are often two to three more that appear later on in the text, but still only four main guards are named. The Fool, the Plow, the Ox and the Day. Or in German, Alba, Flug, Ox and Vom Tag. These main guards find their way into the treatises up to the Renaissance times. Also Joachim Meyer still uses these in his manuscript of 1570. However, he adds additional guards, up to a total of 14 guards with 4 main guards and 10 side guards. Not all of them are starting positions, some are also transitions or endpoints. The guards differ from each other in varying degrees. It is worth mentioning that Joachim Meyer uses the guards to structure its treatise and also to help the fencer structure his or her thoughts and understanding of fencing. While the older manuscripts often explain a technique in all its uses, for example the Twer, how, how do I attack with it, how do I defend myself with it, what can I counter with it, etc. Meyer concentrates on one guard and gives many examples of what to fence from this posture, what works well, what concepts to apply and so on. A completely different approach, a different didactic compared to many late medieval sources. Therefore, we go through the guards one by one and go into their purposes and how to fence from it. Let's start with the upper guard. In Meyer's Oberhut or upper guard, the sword is positioned above the head, without exception. There is no guard of the day at the shoulder. Interestingly, in his mnemonics, Meyer recommends fencing primarily from the guard of the day and not, like many fences nowadays, from the plow. All principal strikes can be executed out of the upper guard and twer strikes are also working very well. The ox. In the ox the point is directed towards the opponent's face. This way a permanent threat of the thrust is held up. At the same time we also protect our roof. From this guard we can strike all main strikes without any problems, but of course also the twer strikes and thrusts. Going into the ox is also a common follow-up reaction once we are in the bind with the opponent. A good guard for medium distances. The plow. As already mentioned, this is a popular guard that we often encounter in sparrings in a HEMA context. The biggest threat from this guard comes from thrusts and quick cuts to the hands and arms. However, the guard is also very nice for quickly parrying the opponent strikes. A universal guard that combines threat, defense and quick attacks. The Fool. You rarely see this guard in fencing nowadays. It invites the opponent to attack high openings. However, these are then quickly parried with strikes that are carried out from below with the long or the short edge. You will certainly fall for this guard a few times, but then the wall magic is gone. This trap only snap once, but after that the guard makes the opponent behave more cautiously. By the way, you can protect your legs with this guard. Very similar to the Bastai with the Dosak or the long knife.
Brass Guard. This guard got its name mainly because of its angry expression. Very powerful strikes can be carried out from this guard. You don't necessarily have to stand in such an extreme position as on Joachim Meyer's picture plates. It is difficult to get out of that static. I see this guard primarily as a dynamic transition posture. Should someone come up to us and nonetheless want to hit our head, you can catch the who with a nimble shifting. The change. The change is the final position of the Vresu, but our options don't end there. From the change you can perform very nice Treiben or Drivings. To do so you move up with the short edge and through the same line as before with the Zornhau. This movement can also be kept a little smaller, similar to the Cabbage or Krauthacke from the Nuremberg Hausbuch. You can strike powerfully through the cross from one change to the other, but in the upper part of the movement we hear transition through the upper guard. Don't forget that. Side guard. This guard can be starting position of the understrikes. Nevertheless, understrikes are also very often executed out of the ox, which is also the safer variant. But if you execute a full upper hoo into the previously mentioned change and then turn the blade, you quickly get into the side guard. Much more important, this guard is particularly good for striking beautiful crooked hoops. Unicorn. This guard got its exotic name from its sword position with the tip pointing upwards into the sky. We were just talking about the starting position of an understrike, well this is its ending position. If we end up in such a posture we can basically do everything that would also be possible from the ox. Above all we are pulled up nicely and have enough distance for strong crooked hooves. The key. This guard is supposed to be able to break all other guards. Now one could discuss what it means to break a guard. If you ask me, it means moving an opponent out of his guard and forcing the opponent to react. The key is very well suited for this because of its central thrusts. The opponent reacts because he must react and there are good follow-up reactions on our part that may hit. If not, it's not too bad. The opponent moved, the dance begins again, his guard is broken anyway. The hanging point. Here the point hangs down, obviously. But otherwise the guard looks very similar to the ox. However, you expose your hands and your head a bit here. The lack of a concrete threat for your opponent invites the opponent to attack. All possible principal strikes can then follow up as a reaction to your opponent's attack. Iron Gate. The Iron Gate is first and foremost a protective guard. In old manuscripts this guard is also called the Schrankhut. The Eisenport or the Iron Gate can also be found in Meyer's rapier section. Here the blade is positioned above the knee. The point is directed towards the opponent. So very similar to the plow. Of course you can also execute crooked hooves from here, but you can also very well raise your sword to protect yourself.
The middle guard. The middle guard is really not a good guard to stay in for longer periods of time, but you still flow through this guard very often, for example when slashing around to the other side to hit the, the arms. Mai also recommends executing crook tools from the middle guard or taking up the concepts of the rose techniques. The long point. The long point is the end point of all principal strikes when struck half, that is not struck through. The long point occupies the center, so we are excellently protected in the long point and can deflect all strikes from us or easily parry them with small movements. Also winding is done from the long point. Other relevant guards for winding are ox and plow. the breaking window, or in German Brechfenster. This guard could also be called the crown. It is a very high parry that allows to protect your roof. This guard is often used when both opponents come very close and threaten each other's heads. From here all sorts of strikes from the bind can be carried out. In conclusion, it remains to say that guards are an excellent memory aid. As soon as I move through a guard or start from there or end up in it, there are always basic concepts that are connected to that guard. This keeps you in the flow and difficult to read. However, one should flow through the guards with hoose and while doing so remains threatening for the opponent. Never change your guard without an idea behind it, without an intention. Otherwise the opponent only has a lot more options to attack an opening while we foolishly spin our swords around. The smooth transition from guard to guard with blows, thrusts and footwork with body tension, adequate alignment and a sense of distance is an important aspect of fencing and reveals the beauty of such a thoroughly serious martial art. <laughs>